Hey guys, so apologies for the recent hiatus, but I'm back now and today I would like to talk with you guys about email. Now, uh, those of you that have been following American news will probably have picked up the story at some point that Vice President Mike Pence has had his AOL email account hacked. Now, apart from this being wonderfully 90s, uh, it did get me thinking about the security of email in general. So that's what today's video is going to be about. Feel free, of course, to share your comments on this down in the comments section by below. I am by no means an expert by any stretch of the definition, but this is something that I would like to just have a bit of a discussion with you guys today. So webmail was popularized pretty early on. I remember when it was the, the big thing and Yahoo was like the biggest email provider because this was back in the day when you'd have like one computer for a household or even like you know one or two computers for, for a business or whatever and you would then sort of basically uh, hot desk it and basically what that means is that you would you know share computers. So having a webmail, a sort of a private enclosure of your email account uh, that you could just hop onto any computer and all the knowledge that you'd need to have is a username and password was incredibly convenient. Its relevance became reinvented with the when people started having multiple devices. So you might have your own laptop at this point and you might have your own uh, smartphone or tablet or anything like that. And then it became even more useful to be able to have the one email account to use across multiple devices. So, you know, going from one extreme where, where few people had a computer of their own to where people now have multiple computers of their own, uh, webmail is seemingly relevant across the, across the board. But I think that there is a potential for rethinking how we use email and whether or not IMAP and web-based email are really all that it's cracked up to be because it seems to be a single point of failure, especially if you use email to transmit and use and keep uh, your most important documents. I know that I do. See, of course, I'm self-employed, which means by law, I'm obligated to keep records of all my invoices and receipts and all that paperwork in case Mr. Taxman decides to pay me a visit and do an audit. And then I have to basically present uh, the runnings of my business as is and, um, and, and, and yeah, you're legally obliged to do that. So it's incredibly important that I keep uh, copies of all these emails that I have and backups. And, you know, I treat them as incredibly important documents because I'm legally obliged to keep records. So email is arguably one of the most important mediums still uh, still in, in the business world today. When you have companies like Yahoo who have had seemingly multiple hacks in, well, no, they've had hacks in the recent, uh, recent past few years, um, and as well as just poor security practices leading to compromised email accounts. Uh, you've of course have things like, uh, you know, the, there are email accounts now that you could use um, the authentication features. So you can log in using Facebook or Google or Twitter or whatever. And then once you, you know, if your Twitter gets hacked, then that means other accounts can get hacked by proxy if you use the authentication from Twitter or Facebook to log into other things. So. Yeah, security is a really big issue. And if you, uh, you know, if you have poor security practices when it comes to managing your email, the costs can be quite consequential. So I have, whenever it's come to important documents, I've always maintained that low tech is the most reliable and offline is generally preferred. So when it comes to businesses, receipts and invoices, of course, the, the wise and proper and expected thing to do is to print them off and keep them keep a hard copy, as well as keeping backups of the electronic copies as well. Nowadays, webmail and IMAP are still like the prevalent um, mediums for uh, accessing your email. So for those of you that don't know what IMAP is, IMAP is when you use like an email client like Thunderbird or Evolution uh, on Linux, or of course uh, the email clients that are various, you know, various email clients available for the Android and, and iOS devices. And they allow you to sort of interact with your email service through those applications, but while still keeping all of the emails across on your email server. Now this can be quite good again for accessing your email across multiple devices and also act, 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 acting as a backup in the event of your phone or computer getting lost or broken or stolen or whatever, or whatever like that. So, when it comes to security, offline storage is something that I generally feel safer with because it keeps the data in your hands. It's on your hard disk drive. You can back it up locally. You can even choose to back it up remotely from there as well, either in uh, like using your own encryption or using the encryption of whatever backup service you use. Again, when you're using offsite backup, there is that element of trust. But with email, there is always going to be that element of trust anyway 
uh, between you and your email service provider. Now, that being said, uh, you can of course run your own mail server, but uh, you don't want to do that. That's a lot of work for very little return. Uh, uh, there are many, many better options. If you're not happy with like free email providers like Gmail or Yahoo or AOL, and you really shouldn't be if you're using your email for something important, uh, then you'll, you'll want a paid service because effectively if you're not paying for the product, you probably are the product. And uh, there are plenty of good email uh, providers out there that offer uh, very reasonable rates for pretty decent service. Uh, if you're looking for something that is particularly uh, open source friendly and, uh, and ethical and all that kind of stuff, postio.de, I'll put a link to it of course down in the description, I've reviewed it on this channel before, is a pretty good bet. It gives you the ability to have control over your software, you can even pay in cash if you wanted to, and they have pretty good uh, privacy policies as well. But you know, Postio isn't the only one out there, uh, there are plenty of other good email clients, uh, email services rather, that you can pay for and that have a good solid degree of, of um, reliability and, and good services about there, and of course uh, many that respect open sources, uh, open sources strengths and values. Uh, another one I believe is ProtonMail. I've not used ProtonMail yet. It will be uh, reviewed at some point, uh, but I do hear good things about it. But don't don't sort of take that as a, a recommendation on my part. Just 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 uh, a secondary recommendation, I guess. If you want to be super secure, then maybe being in control of your own data is is really a good route uh, route to go down. So if instead of using IMAP to access your emails, perhaps using uh, POP might be good. Now this used to be quite famous and quite, well not quite famous, quite um, widely used uh, be before IMAP, before IMAP was sort of widely supported, POP was the de facto way that you'd access your email. That was a significantly more straightforward way and is still supported by every email client, uh, every email service that I know and have used in, in, in recent years. Um, but basically with POP is that you either download a copy or uh, move the files from your, the email server to your local email client. Now, of course, the big problem with this is that you only really have access to, well, you only have access to your email from one location if you actually pull down your emails from your pop, uh, pop server. However, you can of course access emails from multiple devices if you uh, choose to keep the uh, emails on the server and just pull them down from uh, whatever device you happen to use. However, at that point, you are still then taking on the same disadvantages of IMAP, but with less control because you're archiving every single um, uh, message on your server uh, unless you actually go out and manually delete them, whereas IMAP gives you that little bit more convenience there with not really any real cost. And most email services will assume that you want to access their, their stuff through IMAP or webmail rather than through POP. So I've taken, so obviously uh, being self-employed, I have multiple accounts. I've got an account for business and I've got an account for personal correspondence and I've got a, an account that I talk to you guys on YouTube uh, on, you know, there's the, the one that links in on the, um, on the about page of uh, the YouTube channel. For my personal correspondence, I decided to switch from IMAP to POP. And um, and then I just sort of decided to Im embed it into my um, into my backup regimen. And now I've decided to use Evolution as the uh, as my local client. And I've got to say, actually, Evolution it's pretty good. I'm I have not really used it in any sort of length before. But not only does Evolution have it have a solid email client with like threaded emails and all that kind of fancy stuff, it's got a decent calendar, it's got like a task list, it's got um, decent contacts as well, and. Um, and I've, I've got to say, I've, I've sort of grown really comfortable into it over the course of a couple of days. It's really user friendly. It's really customizable. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy with it, I've got to say. And also one of the things with, with Evolution is that there is a very simple way that you can actually back up your entire uh, settings uh, just by going to file and then export Evolution settings. It packages it up into a nice, I think it's a tarball file. And then you can stick that on a CD. You can stick that in remote storage or you can stick it on local storage, of course. Um, and um, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. You saw it, and it really isn't that much more effort than than doing everything online. However, you know there is a cost to convenience as well. Sometimes when you're responsible, well, a lot of the time when you're responsible for your own data, you then have to take a little bit more time to work out what you're going to do with it responsibly, and you know that might involve backing up or or whatever. I will probably report back in a later video as to how I've gotten on with Pop. But to be honest, when it comes to things like personal correspondence, I don't really see many reasons to have it on multiple devices. I've got it on my standard desktop and to be honest I think that nowadays we we are too connected 
And I think that it can affect things like our mental health as well. And it can turn into a bit of a compulsion to always check every status update and, and every sort of, you know, Twitter feed and, and, and everything like that. And it can become so much of a compulsion that it, uh, well, it, it you know, it, it, it drains us, I guess. So it is quite nice that I've got an email client just on my main desktop and it comes through as is. And um, it, since it's personal correspondence, it's not the end of the world if it all goes wrong. That's why I've just decided to do personal correspondence for the time being. And I might move over to more sort of important stuff as time goes on. But I'm really just trying out the idea Idea of using pop over IMAP or webmail um, just for the advantages of increased privacy and stability uh, and um, and security uh, yeah it's uh, it's just a thought I've been playing around with um, but I you know I don't need personal correspondence again on multiple devices in fact I don't even need professional correspondence across multiple devices in fact to be honest I don't you know like you know it, it's uh, I, you know, I use my phone for Twitter and phone calls and that's about the gist of it. And I don't even use Twitter that much these days. Uh, in fact, I've got the, I've still got the Eula phone that I was talking about. That battery lasts for about four days because I hardly ever use the thing. It's brilliant. Um, I, I, I could take it on weekend business trips and, and, and not have to worry about bringing the tra charger around. And that includes things like, uh, you know, web browsing and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your um, sort of email workflow down in the comment section below. Let me know if you're still using POP, IMAP, you, whether or not you use a local client or a webmail client, and how important, of course, is convenience to you in lieu of things like privacy and security. Uh, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.